I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studio, the ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu, and from my home office in Makiki. Well, I finally made time to bring you part two of hashtag grown, not flown. It's very important for me to share this information with you, and I'm so excited about it. So today we're going to have discussions around growing vertically and for pennies and also for being self-sustainable by doing so. So I want to encourage all of you out there to live in preparedness. What does that mean? Make sure that you have enough of your supplies. Um, if you watch the news, always they're teaching us how to live in preparedness by stocking up on certain foods. Personally, I will continue to eat healthy even in times of disaster. So I already have a lot of food in my, in my preparedness kits. So I try to do dairy-free, wheat-free. So I have a lot of rice noodles in storage. I have a lot of rice wrappers in storage. I have beans galore, rice, right, white and brown. Uh, I grow my own vegetables on my balcony, um, as you'll see. So I can easily wrap um, lettuce with the rice paper and pickles and things in the wrapper. And I make my own dressings here. So I have a, a bunch of that, I mean, quite a bit. And then, of course, you know, I have my protein drinks that I drink and which can sustain me along with my kale and water. I have lots of water um, containers, which are food grade, food safe, as well as the bathtub liners and many things. So if you need to learn more about being prepared, um, just go to your city mill or go into, I think, Hawaiian Electric. They put out that pamphlet and they tell you what you need to live in preparedness or Ask one of your Mormon friends. I ask my Mormon friends all the time and they live in preparedness. So they have a lot of great tips, hints, and contraptions that they would love to share with you. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a West Side chick. <laughs> I was born and raised in Miami on the, west, uh, on the west side of Oahu. I graduated from Marino High School and after getting married, I lived in Hong Kong for five years. I have two beautiful daughters, and we also operated and owned a chocolate factory for about 20 years. Now, mind you, I didn't graduate with a business degree, no chocolate degree, but I was able to start a factory and lasted 20 years with God's grace in the business world, helping as many people as we could along the way. I think a lot had to do because I sat on 12 boards and I helped raise millions of dollars for the people in need that lived in Hawaii and abroad. So God has some amazing plans for me. And now of all things from a chocolate maker, I am now considered an urban farmer. So this is really exciting for me because I don't like dirt in my nails. And even though I've been planting and growing my own food for the last 10 plus years, I still don't have dirt in my nails. And did I tell you that I live in a condo? So I live in the sky in the heart of Oahu and I grow my food. So I'm so excited to share some pictures with you and some experiences. And my goal today is to encourage you to get excited about grown, not flown. And if you can, if you have a yard and you can go out into the aina and dig holes and plant your food, do it. If you have raised pots that you can put seeds in and grow it, and then consume it, do it. Just do one little thing. Everybody do raise one more head of lettuce, raise one more batch of kale or tomatoes or cucumbers, and that's how it all starts. And you get really, really excited once you see things start growing. So I want you all to just get a little bit as excited as, as I am because it grows on you, get it? <laughs> but anyway, so let's get started. Hashtag grown not flown is so dear to my heart. Growing food locally is so critical. Thus the hashtag grown not flown um, venture. You know, I just want everyone to think that it sounds cool. It's grown, it's not flown, right? So it makes sense. So what we wanna do is we need to grow local and we need to buy local, we need to eat local. And so that's how we can uh, continue the economy of Hawaii so this year, more than ever, when I was listening to all the campaign speeches, all the speeches, every one of those candidates, especially the gubernatorial candidates, all talk about Hawaii needs to diversify, Hawaii needs to grow other things and do other things besides tourism. 
So what were we before we had tourism? We were an ag state. Now we don't do a lot of ag. Everything pretty much is shipped or flown in. So what does that mean? That means that it was grown on the mainland or some other country. It was grown, it was picked green, not at its ripest, and then it was flown or shipped here. So you're talking, it must be at least a week old. And then we buy it and we hope that it can give us enough nutrients, vitamins, calcium, and all the good things that are in plant-based. And we're hoping that it is still in there, that it can sustain our bodies so we too can get healthier by eating that food. So let me tell you, the food that I grow on my balcony every morning for the last 10 years, I go out there with my little clippers, I clip my, my kale, and then I blend it and I drink it. So that bugger is five minutes old at its best. And so I'm eating food that is five minutes old, full of nutrients, full of all the things that I need for my body. So that's why I'm encouraging all of you, if you do raised beds or anything, that you can produce something so you can get a little bit of a edge over just buying food from the mainland. Especially what we experienced in the last two years. We need more than ever to step it up as far as building up our health and making our bodies healthier and stronger. And so that's why this is now, the, the urgency is now. We need to grow, grow our food locally. So I will hold the, whoever's our next uh, governor, and Lieutenant Governor, I'm holding you responsible for making sure that we become more plant strong here in Hawaii and um, continue to love the people of Hawaii by getting them healthier. So I'm here just to encourage all of that. And I'm going to continue saying that because that's a simple message um, about eating more sustainably by growing it here in Hawaii. So let me tell you a little bit about the Tower Gardens. The Tower Gardens are made of uh, food grade plastic. It's UV protected twice, so it won't crack or chip in the dead of the heat of Makaha Valley or in Mesa, Arizona, where it's 120 degrees. The Tower Garden, we boast that they use 90% less water, which is also some issues um, in mainland states or some parts of the island water, uh, as we are experiencing some areas of drought. We use 90% less water, 90% less land, and we are 100% cheaper <laughs> because you're growing your food so of course it's got to be cheaper than what we buy in the market so those are just some simple facts about the tower garden and why i just continue to promote it so for me i want to share with you how simple growing whether it's a flat bed as i said a grow bed or the tower what we do is we first start with seeds okay and this is what excited me the most about the tower gardens is the seeds when you put the seeds into the growing medium, which we use, we use a growing medium called the rock wall, which is that off colored green square around the, 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 the little seedling. So it's a volcanic material. We are also transitioning into using cocoa core, which is a more organic material. So once we develop uh, using all growth with cocoa core, we can then say uh, the veg vegetables and produce coming off of the towers are organic. Right now, because it's in the volcanic material called uh, rock wool, we can't really call it organic. But what I like to boast is that we are chemical free, non-GMO, five minutes old into my body for consumption. So that is as important to me as um, the label of organic. So all these little terms, we really need to study and understand and get ourselves familiar. Well, what are they marketing to us in the stores? So if you do it, you know what you've done to it or what you haven't done to it. So it makes a lot of sense. So trust in yourself. And that's why it's so important. By using and growing your own food, you get peace of mind that you know what you're putting into your body. If you didn't spray any Roundup or chemicals on your produce, you're not getting it in your body. Does that make sense? Right? Okay. So the next slide I want to share with you, um, this uh, slide shows two weeks of growth. So once you put the seed into the rock wool, and two days later, it starts sprouting. And when I first had my seed sprout, I gotta tell you, I felt like I was a grandma having babies, even though they were the seeds. So after two weeks in the tower garden, they should look like about this size. Uh, and they're ready to go into your tower garden or ready to go into the ground if you wanna do it that way. 
So these two weeks old ceilings, all you got to do is take each one individually and stick it into the tower. Once you put it into the tower, you're going to let it sit in the tower. The tower is on a timer, so it waters my plants 24 times per day. 15 minutes, it waters my plants. 45 minutes per hour, your plant roots sit in oxygen. So every hour, 15 minutes of water, 45 minutes of oxygen. And so this is vertical gardening, and that's this system is called aeroponics. So it's an aeroponic vertical growing system that we like to promote because it mimics mother nature very closely because plants and roots should not be sitting in water. It should be in the dirt, which is the dirt is uh, the source to hold it up, but it's grabbing oxygen while within the dirt and all the other nutrients within the dirt. So um, I like the system that we have because remember I told you, I don't like dirt in my nails. But anyway, so um, the next slide that I want to share with you is this is after two and a half to three weeks of growth. This is my Manoa lettuce. So during the last two years when everyone was in lockdown and we weren't able to go to the market as much, I was growing my all my food, but I focused a lot on Manoa lettuce. And then I would put it on Facebook and everyone would say, hey, you got any more lettuce? And so they would come upstairs or come by and we just give them the Manoa lettuce. And the manila lettuce, of course, being the freshest that it could be, the tastiest that it could be, and I just grew it to share with everyone. And at that time when they would come to my home, I would make them a fresh kale smoothie so they too would not forget the taste of fresh goodness that they should be enjoying daily. So now the next slide I would like to share with you, that is Mizuna. And so about this time of the year, I will start plant, planting my Mizuna seeds because I need to make sure oops, I need to make sure that um, I have the Mizuna at that point so by November or sorry December 31st my Japanese friends who already are ordering the Mizuna from my tower they are going to want to come up and um, um, they're going to want to come up to my home and buy or pick up a Mizuna for their year-end soup and their year-end soup is called ozoni and every year the japanese people need to be making this ozoni and the main ingredient is the mizuna and what happens is in the past few years the mizuna locally has not been the best quality so they can't get it and so that's why they depend on me now to grow the mizuna and so right now i'm coming to you live from my tower garden on my balcony Thank you to our tech person who uh, allowed me to go live and show you all this fresh goodness that we have growing here on my balcony for the last 10 plus years. So can you imagine how much money I save? Can you imagine how much calcium and protein I get directly into my body? It's only 10, five minutes old and it's in my body. It doesn't even know that I've cut it and it's dying and it's already in my system. So I'm so ever, ever grateful to this tower garden and the convenience of it growing on my balcony. So right now I want, um, I want to share with you a little video to show you how the tower garden works. So we're going to be watching that in a few seconds. Garden's state-of-the-art aeroponic vertical garden system uses both water and air to produce more colorful, better tasting, and incredibly nutritious fruits, vegetables, and herbs. Tower Garden has a 20-gallon reservoir at its base that stores the Tower Tonic Nutrient Solution. Developed by experts in plant and human nutrition, Tower Tonic Mineral Blend enables superior plant growth and better nutrition from your Tower Garden produce. The process begins once the seedlings have been placed in your tower garden. Here they will be nourished with tower tonic nutrient solution. Inside the reservoir is a small, low wattage submersible pump. The pump pushes the nutrient solution up through the tower to the top. From there, the nutrient solution drips through the central tower using a special device that evenly cascades the solution over the exposed plant roots. On the journey down the tower, the nutrient solution feeds the roots and becomes highly oxygenated as it cascades gently down the reservoir. 
This process is continuous, providing fresh oxygen, water, and nutrients to the roots of the plants. This patented aeroponic process enables food crops to grow faster than they would in soil, so they can be harvested more often. And it makes Tower Garden the healthier, easier, smarter way to grow your produce. Well, welcome back. So wasn't that amazing? First of all, you got a live shot of the Tower Garden at its best. And you, if I stood there for a few more seconds or minutes, you can actually see the greens, uh, the kale and everything grow. When I do my uh, like trade shows and things, and I'm stuck with the tower for like eight hours sitting with it. I actually should mark where it starts when I get to the location. And after eight hours of sitting with it, I actually, I swear, I see it grow because it does grow within the first, I mean, within eight hours. And so I'm so excited because I get to witness all of that and learn more science than than I thought I ever would, even at my age. But what's really, really neat is that we, we also get to take these gardens around and many schools have invested into the tower garden systems. And I'm very proud to say like Kamehameha Schools, they've even invested to bring in Stephen Ritz to talk about the tower gardens and share the excitement that he has as he travels all over the world to share the, what the tower garden has to offer. So we teach the students the STEM curriculum with the Tower Garden, and the students are so excited. They get to plant seeds, they get to watch it grow, and the best part is they get to eat it. And when a lot of these kids didn't like the green stuff in salad bowls, because they ate it, they're going to, I mean, because they grew it, they're going to eat it. And so that's so exciting when we can stimulate and educate the young ones to appreciate the, the food of the earth. And when I used to work with the Easter Seals and volunteer there, um, my my greatest uh, reward, I should say, is when I was working with, of course, the, 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 the keiki on the wheelchair. They were able to farm and grow things alongside with me, as well as the autistic kids. And autistic kids sometimes won't eat the greens, which they desperately need into their body. But when they grow it and they watch it and they experience it, they are tempted to try it and then they love it and so that to me was an experience i'll never forget and from that point which was very early in my urban gardening uh career that's what i experienced and um from that point on i'll never stop because i thought that was such a rewarding uh feeling that i got and i know now why this is part of my journey so i can continue to grow hawaii healthier so i want to also mention that there are, um, we have existing curriculum around the Tower Garden. Uh, we have a curriculum that was developed so, so teachers don't have to develop a program in their school. It's already developed that they can pick it up and utilize it in their daily curriculum. Um, or if they wanna do an extreme or advanced program, we also have uh, a curriculum for purchase, which goes online and it's uh, interactive. So that's exciting as well. We also, um, for the, continuing education program, culinary program at Kapiolani Community College. They also have tar gardens in their kitchen. So when you sign up for that program, what they're doing is they're growing vegetables in the kitchen. And so when you sign up for a class, the recipes that they provide for you are going to be things that they have grown on the tower. So they're going to give you a basket and a little uh, clipper. And just like the, the chefs at um, the French Laundry, in Napa Valley, the, sh the chefs daily go into their one acre property across the street and they're gonna pick the best, finest herbs, tomatoes, and things that they wanna present to their clientele. And so the, the, the students that attend this program also have that experience to go into a garden, which is right in the kitchen, and clip the vegetables and lettuces that they need to utilize in the dishes that they're going to create. So I'm excited about that. And as their Cannon Club restaurant um, is completed, the kitchen shall grow and uh, the tower garden shall grow, the farm shall grow so that they can produce more, so that they can start producing food for their kitchens, for their clients, um, enjoying the best view in Waikiki from the Cannon Club. So a lot of things are happening. I'm so excited. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to Iolani High School. Iolani High School, also the great school. 
Ilani um, has a sustainability director, Debbie, and she's amazing. She just loves to excite the kids about sustainability. So they have all forms of farming uh, right there on the fourth level of the uh, Sullivan Center. This is one of their towers. And this tower, what they do is the, the students will plant seeds, drop the seedlings in, grow the lettuce. And what they do is every other cycle. So if this is the cycle, they're gonna pick it and they're going to donate it to a shelter or a, a, a senior center so that these people can enjoy that quality of food that the students grew. So they're also cultivating the servants' hearts in these students by helping them, teaching them to grow and to give. So I thought that's exceptional. And then the other crop of the month, because it can produce two crops per month, the second crop of the month, they bag it up and they have the opportunity where the administration um, can come downstairs and grab a bag or two and take it home. Um, and then if they want to drop a donation into the basket, they can. And what that does is it, it provides more uh, funding for this program to continue on. And so how amazing is that? They don't, it's again, financially self-sufficient as well as support uh, sustaining the best quality of food for all of us. So I want now to uh, pay attention to this young man. I've become very dear friends with him. His name is Jax. And I'm always gonna talk about Jax because not only he's the cutest, but he's the funniest, the friendliest young, I think he's just turning 20 now. But Jax, um, very special because he, um, at 19 years old, we were in the middle of the pandemic and stuck at home and on his wheelchair. And he says to his mom, mom, I can't find a job. What am I gonna do? And so I heard that complaint or that, that, that statement. So I said, Jax, we're in the middle of a pandemic. You are a B average student. You just graduated, you have no experience. Um, and there's some other things about you. You have special needs. How do you think, I mean, why do you think you're going to get a job over someone else? I was very straightforward with him. But I tell you what, you've got eight tower gardens in the front yard. His mom loves the tower gardens, so they, she bought about eight of them in her front yard. I said, why don't you make a powwow with your family tonight and talk to them? And Jax, if you're in on this, we will support you all the way. But you've got to say, yes, I want this. Talk to your family and ask them for their support. And if you commit to doing this along with your family, I know that they're going to support you. So the next day, the decision was made. Jack said, we're all in. So what does that mean? At that point, they thought they received two, two checks. So they all decided that those two checks, they would put it together so that they can throw down um, a 300 square foot cement slab. They put that down and then they acquired 12 more towers. So they have 20 tower gardens on the cement slab. And this is now Jax's and the family's tower garden farm. So now I did I did I also mention that Jack doesn't have use of his legs. So he was born, he never walked. He will be on the wheelchair or we put that beautiful slab down because at times he may have to drag his legs and his body across the slab so that he can work the lower parts of the tower, but he doesn't have to go on dirt and he doesn't have to go on gravel. And he can sit on his wheelchair and he can test the water, fill the water. He can grow the first like four layers of plants and some of the commercial towers go up seven layers. So the upper layers, his family, his Ohana had to agree that they were all in with him and they have. And so that's why they had to do the family powwow so now Jax, I believe he's 20 years old now, on his wheelchair, in his tower garden farm, has a future. So he's growing food for the neighbors and for the restaurants around him that want to support what Jax is doing. So how amazing is that, that these little stories just inspire me to continue to do more and more because there are 24 hours in the day. We need to utilize every minute of it so that we can make a change in many people's lives. On the next slide, I want to share with you, this is in East Hollywood, um, the Kobe Bryant Foundation. They developed this uh, abandoned uh, hotel and they turned it into, I want to say, they call it a soup kitchen. So on the ground floor, they feed the houseless community. On the second floor, they have activities. On the third floor, more. But on the rooftop, 
that shot of that wall, that mustard colored wall is lined with 30 tower gardens. Now, can you imagine the abundance of food that they are creating? I sat on the board of directors for the River of Life mission and we get all the donations and we're very grateful for all the donations for the people of the street. But rarely do we get a good or a great quality of vegetables. So now at this shelter, the volunteers from below, when they want to do more than just receive, they can volunteer to go up onto the third level and take care, harvest, and bring down to the, the, the kitchen the vegetables and feed the fellow houseless community the best quality that even the richest can enjoy. Because remember, five minutes from harvest to body, that's crazy amazing. And that's how we should be living and eating. So I just tell you, everybody can do this. You got a little box, you got a little wooden box, go and create some food, go and create, uh, drop some seed. The seeds become plants. After they become plants, it's protein, it's calcium that you can consume, put into your body and enjoy and reap the benefits of good health. Especially we have no idea what's coming down the pipelines in the next few years, but you know what? I'm ready. So are you ready? That's my question to you. So every morning for the last 10 plus years, I take my clippers, I walk to the uh, my tower, I take 10 leaves, and those 10 leaves of kale, when I calculate it, when I go to the market, those 10 leaves of kale average about $4 for that bunch. Now, if I've eaten that for the every month for the last 10 plus years, every month there are 30 days in a month times $4 a bunch. So I average about $120 of consumption of kale into my body for the last 10 years. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Since growing my kale, I have never bought kale since starting growing my kale on the tower garden. Before that, I never ate kale. Kale was made, I thought, for the salad bars, to line the salad bars, but now I eat it every day and for pennies. I want that for you as well. So I know that we had so much to talk about, but especially because I'm doing all the talking, but we've run out of time for today. So I hope that I've encouraged or motivated you to go out and start growing. Don't wait, Hawaii. Keakua has blessed us many times and has spared many storms and fizzled it out so it wouldn't damage our beautiful islands. Please don't wait, Hawaii. Wake up. We'll be back in two weeks with more of Taking Your Health Back with Wendy Lowe. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.